Psalms 92 is a praise to God, a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. So this was the day when they were in the meet before God, no work. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So giving thanks to God is good. And to sing praises unto thy name, God's name. You know how I many hymns and, and songs are out there that do not have God's name in it? And call what we were talking about last night at church is the amazing grace which is sung everywhere, bagging pipes and funerals and and it does not have the name of Jesus in it. We know the story, we know the writer and his his testimony. But the hymn itself does not have the name of Jesus in it. Today's Christian contemporary music and gospel music and all that and southern gospel music and whatever you want to put titles to it does not have the name of Jesus Christ in it. It is a, a song that you can write down on paper and hand to your girlfriend if you think you're writing it to her. Matter of fact, it could have been to a girlfriend. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. So giving thanks to God and singing praises to God is God's loving kindness. And God's faithfulness. The loving kindness that you got up in the morning and the faithfulness that he's been at all, with you all through the night. I mean all through the day until you about to close your eyes and go to sleep for the night. There's plenty of loving kindness and there's a plenty of faithfulness to God that you can sing and thank him for. Upon an instrument of ten strings. Now a guitar has six strings. And they gave me some names and all that. It's an instrument of ten strings. Upon the sultry and upon the harp with a solemn sound. You're not beating anything. You're not banging anything. It has a, a particular sound, and it is a sound for the for the spirit to praise God with. And you go through the Bible, mark all the instruments. God will tell you what instruments are good for Him. And you don't find drums in worship of God. For Thou, God, Lord, has made me glad through Thy work. What God does should make you pleased. Paul says rejoice evermore. He didn't give no qualification causes or any loophole. Well, I'm in misery. Well, still rejoice evermore. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. I guess you could say that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me in the Old Testament. And I'm not taking that verse out of context because in Philippians, that's a verse after, after the people in the church were giving money and giving aid to help churches and Paul. Well, in the Old Testament, you had to give in order to be right. You had to give to the Levites. You had to make sure that you didn't, you didn't do falsely with anybody. You didn't charge interest. You, didn't, you, didn't, you followed the law and brought what animals you needed to bring and what meal you needed to bring. The first tenth. Of everything. O Lord, how great are thy works. Yes, they are. And thy thoughts are very deep. God does wondrously that we don't even know about. I mean, you may have a fish tank in your house and, and you take that, that, that can of food and you just shake it over there and they go eat. Well, God has t ton more of fish he's got to feed. You may have a dog that you feed, but look at all the four-legged animals that God has to feed. Yet he says his eyes are upon the sparrow. He counts every hair on your head. We can't even do that. So God is great. The brutish man knoweth not. Neither does a fool understand this. You can't expect someone who is not trusted in God as their Savior to understand. The Bible says they have the spirit of man. They don't have the spirit of the Holy Spirit. They don't understand God. They make up their science. They make up their, their stories. They make up their fables. They make up whatever they can do. 
because they don't know what God can do. God can take nothing, and, and here we are. Man has to explain where his creation of Big Bang or whatever he wants to believe in outside of God, where did it come from? There's never that answer. When the wicked spring as the grass, life. And you cut grass before you know it, it's time to cut it again. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, and they do, they blossom, they, they multiply. You know, the Bible says that uh, there'll be more that go to hell than, than there'll be few that, that get saved. Many, but the few. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. God is the God in all of the all. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. There goes universalism. God has enemies. So God is the God of love. Everybody will be saved in the end. Well, how can they perish? Match that word with, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Verse 9 tells you everybody does not go to heaven in the end. The God of love also has God, it has enemies. Get that. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. By my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. Horn is a symbol of strength. It is the, the, the vessel used for the oil to anoint the kings, the priests. Unicorn. Why is that so hard for Bible scholars to get that word unicorn? Yeah, the world of magic, the world of new age, uh, children's books have a unicorn. What is a unicorn? It is an animal that has one horn. The Bible says there are unicorns. So there are unicorns. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And again, that's the horn. You know what? God doesn't use old oil. He uses the fresh, the, the, the very beginning. Like you're supposed to bring your very first of your first fruits to the Lord. You're to get the firstborn. God wants the first. God wants the fresh. He don't want wine that's been sitting around too long. My eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies. Again, that's, a, that's an Old Testament thing, the victory. Today, we're to love our enemies. And my ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. They're going to get their just desserts. But God says, I'm the God of vengeance. Not you. The righteous shall flourish. Flourish. Enlarge, increase, and growth. Like the palm tree. A palm tree is a fibrous tree. If you cut a pine tree in half and look at the trunk of that thing, that trunk has, is not like a trunk like any other tree. It is interwoven fibers. And like Tracy and I the other day when we went to the river, we, we saw the the roots of a palm tree. That thing is, it is like roots that I've never seen before. It just goes out like a net. And that's why those trees can survive the hurricane. Wherever we saw, there were roots. And guess what? Well, our roots are to be grounded in Lord Jesus Christ and we're to be a tall palm tree. And palm trees do have fruit. And he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Lebanon, the cedars have like a cone. And there are male and female species of the Lebanon trees. 
Those that he planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And the Bible speaks in the New Testament about being grafted in we are. We are grafted into the vine to bring forth fruit. Again, that fruit comes from the vine, not from us. We just hold the fruit. Life comes from the vine. Listen, when you graft it in, you cut off a branch off a, off a plant. All right, as soon as you cut off, your the, the life is gone. You're dead. And you got to be cut into the, to the new vine. And you got to be taped to the new vine. And to the new vine and you grow in one. And after that, you start producing fruit. They shall, uh, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. There's no limit to your fruit bearing this. The fruit that you bring, if you train up in the Lord to do right, their fruit will be accounted to you. And like I say, if you support missionaries, you can give the money and still produce fruit. Because you're helping them. They shall be fat and flourishing. Again, uh, the fruit is fat and it's growing. And Israel never did become to that potential. Israel is raising children up today, but for, for Satan. You know, Satan has fruit as much as the Christian, as much as Jesus Christ. He has fruit. Jesus said, wherefore by your fruits you should know them. You want to know what a pastor's like? Watch his children. Watch his household. His wife and his children. You want to know how to do business with somebody? Watch his family. That's his fruit. You want to know how a Christian is? Watch his fruit that, he, that he's brought in the Lord. You say, well, he hasn't brought any fruit. Has he not brought in fruit or has he not brought in unknown fruit? I mean, as much as a missionary letter is, if you take part in that missionary, that letter is, is sent to you to, to tell you what you've been doing. To show that the Lord is upright. He is, he is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. God is holy. God cannot lie. God is always faithful. God is always loving kind. But he's also a God that has enemies. He is a holy God that has no unrighteousness that, hey, if you don't do what he tells you to do, you don't get a timeout. You don't get prison. You get judgment and a sentence that he will make sure you serve out. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, 
sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God.